This is the brand new Polar Grid X2 Pro, and it's pretty impressive. But before we talk about this new one, quick shout out to the original Polar Grid X because fun fact, the review I made on this watch was one of the first videos I ever uploaded to YouTube, and it's kind of what made this channel. So I'm feeling nostalgic today. The new Polar Grid X2 Pro is mainly designed to be a high-end outdoor-oriented smartwatch for hikers or backpackers or even trail runners. But on top of that, this watch can do a whole lot more because it's basically just the clone of the Polar Vantage V3 that came out a few months ago. The Grid X2 Pro and the Vantage V3 share a lot in common from their displays, their internal guts, their GPS chipsets, and a whole lot more. In fact, if I had to summarize the Grid X2 Pro, I would basically just call it the Polar Vantage V3 on steroids because it does add a few extra features and a really premium build quality. And that's really what this thing's all about. And not only did they improve the build quality on the Grid X2 Pro, they also improved the software by fixing a whole bunch of issues that I previously identified in my initial review of the Polar Vantage V3. And if you're a Vantage V3 user, there's some good news here for you as well. Before we get there though, a quick note, a quick disclaimer, if you will, the watch I have here, I've only had for a couple of days and it's a pre-production unit with pre-production firmware. The software I have on this watch is not in its final form. And because of that, I don't have all the features that I'll be talking about in this video just yet. So I won't be calling this video an in-depth review or a final review of the new Grid X2 Pro. Instead, it's more of a hands-on first look kind of situation. And because of that, I won't be diving too deep on anything like GPS or heart rate accuracy or any software hiccups that I've run into so far, because that wouldn't be fair since it's not in its final form. For all that stuff, you'll have to wait for my in-depth final review that'll come down the road when this watch is in its final form, and that should be in a few weeks from now. With all that jabber out of the way, let's dive into the first topic and the one you probably care about the most, pricing and availability, and buckle up because this one is not a cheap watch. On launch day, this watch will be available in two different versions. There's going to be the base model, which will be a stainless steel version, and that watch will come in two different colors. That'll be night black and stone gray, and that watch will come in at $749 here in the USA. The other model available is the Grid X2 Pro Titan, which is the one I have here. This is made out of titanium. It's got a raw titanium look to it, and it will be $869 here in the USA at the time of launch. Much. Yes, very expensive. However, the Grid X2 Pro Titan does have one trick up its sleeve and it's that it actually does include two different bands in the box. You will get this black silicone band I have here, but on top of that, you get a really nice autumn leather band that's like a deep brown leather that looks really classy with this watch, and that's also included for that price. Now, on top of that, there will be one more purchasing option, and that will be a bundle with the Polar Grid X2 Pro, along with the super popular Polar H10 heart rate strap, and that bundle will be available for $799. Now that the cat's out of the bag with pricing, I just wanna share my thoughts on the price a little bit before we move on. That is a very aggressive price point for the Polar Grid X2 Pro. And I know what they're aiming for here. It is a premium product, but at that $800, $750 price point, you are competing directly with other devices out there like the insanely feature-packed Garmin Epix or Phoenix 7 models, or even with the Suunto Vertical here. And more importantly, the Suunto Race, because this watch has a very similar set of features. It's got great build quality and it comes in at nearly half the price. But we're gonna talk all about this at the end of this video, so stick around for that. And when it comes to availability, the Polar Grid X2 Pro will be available for pre-order starting today on March 20th, and they will start shipping on April 3rd. So check out the links in the description if you're interested in checking this watch out. With all that pricing talk out of the way, let's move into the bread and butter of this update, and that's going to be the hardware. So on the left side of your screen, I've got the Polar Vantage V3, and on the right, we've got the Polar Grid X2 Pro. And the big departure here that defines the Polar Grid X2 Pro, apart from the Vantage V3, is mainly going to boil down to the build quality and the design. When it comes to size and weight, the Grid X2 Pro comes in around 49 millimeters in diameter, and it's about 14 and a half millimeters thick. And for the weight of this watch, it will come in at 79 grams with the included band for the stainless steel model, and for the titanium model, I have here, this watch comes in at 64 grams with the band, which is pretty light for a watch like this. And for a quick size comparison, I've got some other watches on the table here. All the way on the left, we've got the Suunto Race. Then we've got the Polar Vantage V3. 
Then we've got the original Polar Grit X Pro. Then we've got the new Grit X2 Pro. Then we've got the Garmin Phoenix 7X, which is the larger version. And finally, the Epix Gen 2, which is the 47 millimeter form factor. And if you were curious what it looks like on my 165 millimeter circumference wrist, that's the Grit X2 Pro on my wrist. And as you can see, the band actually lands somewhere where in the middle of my wrist back here. And that's because they include two different lengths of bands in the box. And this is the smaller band. So it actually fits me really nicely. Let's take a closer look at the hardware now. And right off the bat, let's just get this out of the way. From an aesthetic and look standpoint, this is a really sexy looking watch. I really like the way they designed this. I really like the side and the buttons and the bezel and the little compass annotations around the perimeter here. It's just, it's a, it's a beautiful watch. And overall, this is probably one of my favorite looking watches in this price category, but that's just my opinion. With looks aside, when it comes to the build quality on this watch, it's just as good as it looks. It feels really high quality. The metals feel very premium. Everything just feels really nice and sturdy. And when it comes to the buttons, they're very nice. There's a nice haptic click to them. They don't feel mushy at all. The Grid X2 Pro is not only well built, it's also tested to a military standard 810H, which is the first time Polar has done this for a watch. And that's good to see. That, that means it's been tested for water and dust resistance and abuse and all kinds of situations. And at Polar's media event, they actually showed us some of their test procedures and how many times they dropped it and they put it in pressure testing vessels and a lot went into this watch. So that's very cool to see. Flipping the watch over reveals the optical heart rate sensor and SpO2 sensor in the middle here. And this is the same Polar Elixir biosensing technology that they used in the past on the Polar Vantage V3. So there's no difference here. However, they did tweak some stuff under the hood, which we'll talk about in a minute. And right below that heart rate sensor, we do get the same magnetic charging connection as the Vantage V3, as you can see here. And just like on the Vantage V3, on the Grid X2 Pro, this does use an industry standard quick release band. So if you wanna replace the band, you can pop it off with your fingernail very easily and swap it out for anything else. Jumping back to the front of the watch, let's talk about the display. This watch features a 1.39 inch AMOLED touch enabled display. And again, this is the same exact display that they used on the Polar Vantage V3 as well. Shocker. This display is super vibrant and great to look at. It's got great contrast and bright colors, and it also gets up to a thousand nits of brightness. In terms of visibility, it's great. I've had almost no issues with this watch out in direct sunlight. You can pretty much always see the information when you need it. Even though the Polar Vantage V3 and the Grid X2 Pro do share the same display technology, what's on top of that display is very different. On the Polar Vantage V3, we got a Gorilla Glass lens on top of that display, where on the Grid X2 Pro, we now have a sapphire lens, which is incredibly scratch resistant. That sapphire lens, in my opinion, is a big deal because personally, I have scratched a whole lot of Gorilla Glass watches in my history, and I've never managed to scratch a Sapphire watch. So I usually opt for Sapphire if that is an option. Now that we've talked about the hardware and the display, let's quickly run through some of the features between the Polar Vantage V3 and the Grid X2 Pro that are the same from a feature and software level. So when it comes to the computers, the CPUs inside these things, they're identical. When you're actually using this watch and you're actually swiping through the menus, there's virtually no lag. Another similarity between these two watches is going to be the user interface. And it's the exact same user interface we've seen from Polar before. That means when you swipe through the menus, you'll see the same things like your activity widget, you've got your weekly summary, your nightly recharge, your sleep tracking, your skin temperature widget, and all of this stuff is the same. And finally, the last similarity that I'll mention here is that the internal storage is also the same between the Vantage V3 and the Grid X2 Pro. You've got 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and that storage is only used for the mapping and navigation function on these watches. There's no music support, there's no Spotify or Amazon Music or anything like that, it's simply used for maps only at this time. So as you can see, aside from the hardware, the Vantage V3 and the Grid X2 Pro are basically the same watch. So what's new? Let, let's talk about that now. The first software level feature I'll mention here isn't really a feature at all, it's more of a fix. Because on the Polar Vantage V3, when I tested this watch out, I ran into a bunch of situations where the watch would actually crash and restart, and actually happened mid-activity a couple of times, causing me to lose some data, which wasn't great. The good news 
here is that Polar has gone back to the drawing board and they've fixed all of the most common crash scenarios that they've seen on the Polar Vantage V3, on the new software on the Grid X2 Pro. Next up on the new feature list are new watch faces. Polar has added a couple of new digital watch faces that have sort of a rugged outdoor aesthetic. Unfortunately, they're not on my version of the software, so I'll have to wait and see what they're all about, but they do look really cool in the graphics that they provided. Moving into the next topic, and that's going to be mapping and navigation updates. And this is a big deal because they've added breadcrumb trails to the map. So if you don't know what breadcrumb trails are, it means when you're on the map page and you're in an activity tracking a run or a hike or whatever, there'll be a little indicator of where you came from in the form of a line or a trail that's behind you. It's like a history of where you came from. Now in the Polar Vantage V3, this feature was simply not available unless you're using the watch to navigate a course, then you would get a breadcrumb trail. But if you just started an activity and you went out on a run, you don't get that trail, which is kind of strange because every other GPS watch on the market does that by default. Well, I'm happy to report that Polar has changed this and now on the new software on the Grid X2 Pro and the Vantage V3, you will get a breadcrumb trail, which is great. With the map experience out of the way, let's talk about navigation because Polar has added one more feature and that's Strava route support. So if you have a paid Strava account, you can now design a course in Strava and sync it with your Polar watch and be able to transfer that course over to your watch within a couple of clicks very easily. Another huge update in the software on the Grid X2 Pro is going to be when it comes to the heart rate sensor. And like I said before, the Vantage V3 and the Grid X2 Pro do share the exact same hardware. However, Polar has gone through great lengths to improve the accuracy of this sensor in the software. It turns out that Polar's biggest struggle with these watches when it comes to optical heart rate accuracy boils down to confusing your heart rate from the optical sensor with the cadence when your foot hits the ground while you're running. Because when your foot hits the ground, it causes your whole body to move a little bit and this little optical heart rate sensor is trying to pick up your heart rate in a very similar way, those little blips all look very similar so the watch can confuse your cadence with your heart rate and vice versa. And during Polar's media event, they showed some slides and graphics on how they improved this and the challenges they faced and it was really interesting. So I'm excited to test it out. Now, unfortunately, again, it's not in this version of the software that I've been using. So we'll have to wait and see in my final review if it actually got better. In the final set of updated features I'll mention in this video comes down to advanced training metrics. First up, we've got vertical speed in VAM. This measures the rate of ascent and descent so you can view your speed on climbs and descents more accurately. Next up, Polar says that they've improved their swimming metrics and they left that pretty broad so we'll have to wait and see. And finally, we have a new feature when paired to Sennheiser Momentum earbuds. This is really interesting. Basically, if you have the new Sennheiser Momentum Sport earbuds, you can pair those earbuds directly to your watch and you can actually monitor your internal body temperature in real time during your activities. This is a really interesting feature and I don't have those earbuds, but I need to get them because I really want to try that out. And that's really all the new software level features on the new Polar Grid X2 Pro. However, you're probably wondering what set of these features will trickle over to the Vantage V3. The good news here, just about all of them. These two watches are basically going to share the same exact firmware. So the Vantage V3 will be getting the breadcrumb mapping and the new heart rate sensor algorithm and the stability improvements and the Strava support and everything from the Grid X2 Pro will end up on the Vantage V3 as well. So that's really awesome news. When it comes to the time frame of that firmware update and when you'll get it on your Vantage V3, that's a little bit unclear right now, but Polar stated that it will come very shortly after the launch of the Grid X2 Pro, which comes out on April 3rd. And the final thing I wanna mention on the Grid X2 Pro before we move into the conclusion of this video is going to be when it comes to battery life. Again, the Polar Vantage V3 and the Grid X2 Pro share the same exact battery life. They've got the same display, the same internal guts, and the same battery size, so they have the same battery life. However, this time around, Polar did redefine what that battery life is in different scenarios. For example, in Polar's old battery spec, they would define smartwatch mode as daily use, but also including one hour of GPS activity every day. And no one else in the industry does that from Garmin to Suunto to Koros, nobody else states it like that. So Polar's gone back and they've sort of redefined their battery spec to be just simply smartwatch mode using the heart rate 
sensor getting notifications with no GPS activity. And in smartwatch mode, you can expect up to 10 days of use, which does seem pretty accurate on this watch. They've also redefined their performance mode or the highest accuracy setting when you're using this watch out on a run with dual frequency mode enabled for the best GPS accuracy. And in that mode, you'll get up to 43 hours of use. And that brings us to the conclusion of this video where I want to discuss where I think the Grid X2 Pro lands in the current market of feature packed GPS smartwatches right now, because there's a lot of competition out there at this price point. Let me start by saying this, the Grid X2 Pro is a beautiful watch and I really like the design. In fact, I'd go as far to say that I prefer the Grid X2 Pro's design over the competition and that, that says a lot. The hardware on this thing is awesome. The buttons feel solid, it feels great on the wrist, it boasts impressive battery life, it's got a sapphire display and it's great to see that Polar's been hard at work behind the scenes addressing some of the underlying issues that popped up on the Polar Vantage V3 as well in the software. And I gotta be honest, I've been wearing this watch for the past couple of days and I took it off today to make this video and I put my Garmin 400 965 back on my wrist and it was really hard to put this watch back on my wrist after wearing the Grid X2 Pro for the past couple of days simply from a hardware level. This thing just looks and feels really good. However, with all of that said, the price of this watch coming in at $749 and going all the way up to $869 for the Titan model here is in my opinion going to be an uphill battle for Polar. Because again, at this price point, the competition is fierce. You've got devices out there like the Garmin Fenix 7 Pro and Epix Pro starting at around $899 but can be found on sale from time to time. And these watches have a way better mapping experience. You've got more useful wellness tools like body battery and HRV status and stress tracking and way more smartwatch features including music support from streaming services like Spotify or or Amazon Music. And that's not to mention that these Garmin watches have a pretty good track record when it comes to reliability and the GPS and heart rate accuracy. And finally, that brings us to the next comparison here, the Suunto Race, because this watch is very similar in a lot of ways. It's got a very similar mapping experience. It's got excellent build quality with a sapphire lens and AMOLED display. It's got a very similar set of wellness features and training tools, and it's nearly half the price. The Suunto Race comes in at $450 here in the USA compared to $750 for the Grid X2 Pro. That is a very big difference for a very similar watch. But really, it's hard to compare these products right now because this is just the beginning of the story for the Grid X2 Pro. Because as I mentioned before, I'm still waiting on the final production firmware to really test this thing out and see what all these new features can do. And if it's a far superior watch at that point, it might be in the conversation. And now's the point of the video where I want to hear from you. Do you have a question about the Grid X2 Pro that you want me to cover in my next video in the in-depth review? Are you interested in this watch? Did you pre-order already? Or are you just gonna go for some Something like the Suunto Race? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of this video. And if you're still watching, you probably enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you went down and gave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the future, including that in-depth review. And while you're down there hitting that subscribe button, make sure to drop into the description down below where you will find links to all the watches I've talked about in this video, including the new Polar Grid X2 Pro, the Garmin watches, the Suunto watch, they'll all be linked down below. And those are affiliate links that do help support this channel, but they cost nothing extra to you, so you might as well use them. In the final plug I got for you, I promise the last one, make sure to check out my podcast, that's a YouTube channel and the audio version. Check out my Instagram, follow me over there, and check out my Threads account. Check out the merch store too. That's right below the video, the little pictures down there. Okay friends, that's all I've got for this one. I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.